Hey guys, let's talk about how to jog the machine and what a positive and negative move is on an X, Y, and Z Cartesian coordinate style system. Although the cutter stays stationary vertically, it does not move. The table does the moving. Sometimes a positive and negative move can be somewhat confusing. But just imagine that it is the cutter that's moving. Anytime the cutter ends up on this end of the table or moves in this direction, it's a positive move. Now the table itself is going to be moving this direction, then there's the confusion. Okay, the table just shifted in a negative direction, but the cutter is over here. So just imagine looking at it from above and pretend it's the spindle that's dancing around the table and not the table dancing around the spindle. So anything to the right on an x-axis move is a positive, anything to the left is a negative. As the table forces the spindle to be positioned over here, that's a y-positive move. So if the cutter ends up on this side of the table, that's a negative, okay? Spindle moves. Spindle moves over here, it's a y-positive. Spindle moves towards the front of the machine, it's a y-negative. And on the Z, anything coming down is a negative, anything going up is a positive. Now I know that's a simple thing to look at, but it took me a while to get my head around that because this table's moving to negative, yet it's a positive entry, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, dance the table around a little bit and take a look at that. Let's jog the machine. When you hit your jog button, watch what happens to the screen you get the physical location of the machine where it sits. Now, just because you cold started the machine previously and all your screws and servos and everything found their way home, the machine is currently sitting at X, Y, Z, zero. All right, let's move the X axis. Go to your dial, move it over to X. I'm gonna put this on 10 just cause I want this to move around. And I'm gonna click this a couple times. Let's go one, two, three, four, Five clicks. Five times 10 is 50. We just moved the table 50 thou. If you want to move it 55 thou, click this to one. Go five more. One, two, three, four, five. Now you're 55. You want to go 55, five. Let's go one more to the 10th. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. 555. Move to the next axis. Move the same axis move a different axis, it doesn't matter. Select it here, and let's see the difference in movements between. This is a 10 thou turned at a relatively moderate rate. I'm gonna put it on one and turn the dial at the exact same speed. You can see it is considerably slower. I'm going to put it on a tenth and move it at the exact same speed. You'll be lucky if you can pick this up with your eyes. It's moving. And if you don't think it's moving, as you turn this, verify on your console, it's definitely moving. It's moving extremely slow. Alright, now that you've moved your machine all out of position, and I'm going to move it grossly out of position because it applies to what I'm going to show you next. Let's put these back on 10. That's about four inches out. Y. And now Z, we're gonna come down with the spindle. Terrific. You've just made a mess out of your working envelope and you wanna move everything back to where it was. That's called a home position and there's a couple of ways to do that. You can hit your manual button to exit. Remember I told you that a manual and a space bar are like, I don't want to be here anymore. Oops, I don't want to do anything else. So hit your manual. Now when it gets to the enter next command line, you can type in HO. That stands for home. When you hit your enter button, watch what happens. Nothing. How come? Because the blue light on top of the console is blinking and you didn't notice it gives you the option to get your hands clear and tell everybody else to get their hands clear. Now when you hit the start, the table's gonna go. There 
There you go. The machine is now in the home position, and that was a uh, enter next command HO signal that gave it that. One of the beautiful things about the Fadal CNC is there are multiple ways to send it home. So I'm going to mess it up again on the X, Y, and Z by hitting the jog. X move, Y move, and here comes the Z. I'm going to hit manual to exit. Now I'm going to hit the space bar a couple times. And you'll see that the bottom quadrant of your screen is going to start toggling through different menus. You go through a quick key menu, you go through an edit menu, and you'll go through a functions menu. In the functions menu, you have number four. So hit number four. Now it knows you want to go home, but why? You just want to just get there temporarily or you want to get there for power off. I just want to get there for just for now. So I'm going to hit the one. When I do, what do you suppose is happening right now? Blue light on top of the machine. You gotta get used to looking up there. Blue light's blinking. When you hit the start button, Z goes up first always. Table goes back to home. If you were to hit the space bar one more time, two more times, three, whatever, 19 times, it's not gonna hurt. Hit the manual button. Gives you the X, Y, and Z zero back on the screen. Okay, so that is two ways to get the machine to go back home. And like I showed you, and maybe you heard me say it, maybe you didn't pay attention, the Z is always the first tool to get out. So if you've got your tool positioned in a precarious location and you're worried about the table wrapping in X or Y and snapping that tool off, the Z is going to come out first. And uh, you're just going to have to try that a few times to find out. You know, a good way to build confidence with the CNC machine, and I did this, I'm not ashamed to say it, I put wooden dowels in my tool holders instead of actual tools. So if I did something wrong, all I did was snap off the dowel. And you'd be surprised what a confidence builder that is when you know you're not going to make a $40 mistake because you forgot to change a dial from an X to a Z or whatever. All right, let's look at the schedule here and see what we got left. Showed you how to jog the machine. Showed you how to send the machine home. I showed you the uh, home for shutdown. Now, if you're going to turn your power off, let's get back here. I'm going to hit the space bar. And if you hit the space bar and your cursor just jumps around, then hit the manual. Then hit the space bar. Quick keys, edit, functions. I'm going to go back to the home axis for four. And if your machine is out of location and you're shutting it down for the day and you will power it off, instead of just hitting one to send it home, select number two and send it home. That's the return for power off. In the bottom menus, you're going to find something that says offsets. Let's take a look at the offsets. I know there's a lot of you that are saying, oh good, he's going to get into offsets. Hit, some, hit number six. These numbers correspond with the numerical entry that will get you there. When you hit it, the first one that's going to open up is your tool offset register. These are diameters. These are either actual diameters of the tool that you want to put in there and the actual height once you've calibrated the tool or these are diameters that you enter to allow your cutter compensation to give you the desired result because you have a reground cutter or a cutter that's just not cutting on size for some reason oversize undersize whatever this is where you would make your adjustment this is a very conversational area and if you wanted to change let's say we're going to change tool number one to 120 you can go down here into all these other sub menu entries that open up and you say what do you want to do you want to enter a new value modify change a whole bunch of them at one time or change the whole menu let's just say we want to enter a new value for tool number one so new value is the number one entry we'll hit one and now make sure when you hit number one that the number one is showing up in that block right there if it's not type it in there it is and hit enter it says enter new diameter offset 126. This will usually coincide with the tool number one entry. This is where you type in your new diameter. Point 120 or whatever tool diameter you need to put in. And you can just hit the enter key until your finger falls off now. Nothing's going to happen that's not going to be good. So it's going to say the new length. If you don't want to change the length, don't do anything. Just hit enter again. 
shows you what you had and what you're going to have. If you like it, you can hit enter or you can hit one. I'm gonna hit enter and watch that 126 change to 120. There it is. This first page of the offset register is for the tools. Now, as you hit enter, it will scroll you through all the tools. I'm just gonna hit enter again. Okay, it is giving me 99 different tool options for this register. Now you can hit enter when you get to the very end of it, but nothing's gonna happen. You wanna hit the space bar, you can get to the very next table, but it's gonna be a bunch of different values for a different purpose. If you wanna stay in the tool value, you hit the backspace button, and it takes you back to the original screen. Let's do the very next table. The very next table is your tool offset register. This is where your, excuse me, it's your fixture offset register. If you want to reproduce a program or a part or reference a certain location in the machine and then repeat code at a variety of different locations, this is where you identify the X and Ys. Now as you hit enter, it will take you through all the available fixture offsets that it will allow you. And this machine has 48 possible different locations that I can identify on that table and repeat code. And that is incredibly helpful. Let's go with the space bar for the next table. If you want to track the tools that you're using and how long they were used, you have to engage that. It has to be in the program. It has to be turned on. But this is where that data would show up. You go to the next table with the space bar. These are internal machine parameters that are used for the calibration of the machine. So chances are, unless you have a serviceman on site or you're on the phone with one of them, you're never gonna mess with those V values. So don't just start poking and putting stuff in there. Let's say, and, well, you know, I don't know what it's for. Let's see what happens. Don't do it because something bad will happen. So if you have a service guy on the phone, he's gonna ask you what they are or tell you what to enter. And at that time, start messing with them until which time, don't mess with them. Okay, it's the offset registers, tools, locations, and machine parameters. Next series, I'm going to show you how to start a program from scratch, and we're going to enter some basic information, possibly get the machine to move around. Stay tuned.